You've probably heard of program music. What is it? It is music that has some outside of the music idea attached to it. Well, like what? Let's say a composer wants to create a piece of music that reflects or demonstrates nature or the great outdoors in some way. These musical compositions usually have titles that tell us what these outside of the music ideas are. Can you think of some? How about The Four Seasons by Vivaldi or Beethoven's Symphony No. 6, The Pastoral? In both of these cases, the composer, before creating the music, decided, I'm going to write some music that, to me, describes some unique aspect of each season, or farmers and other country folk reacting to things like thunderstorms. The music certainly will contain many of the aspects of the elements of music that we've been exploring in these chats, but there is additionally an outside the music element which gives us an almost picture or uh, a scene in our minds, if you will, something the composer is attempting to paint with the music. If we want to be really inclusive about this, every song, every hymn, every oratorio like Messiah or Elijah, every opera you have ever encountered fits into this category of program music. Why? Because they all have words and a story that very specifically inform us about the meaning of this music. Every ballet score fits into the program music category as well because they all have plots or stories. Now you might ask, what kind of music is not program music? And what's it called? It's called abstract music. Abstract music has no words, no story, but that certainly doesn't mean it has no intellectual or emotional meaning. Musical compositions such as this have generic names like Piano Sonata No. 4 or String Quartet No. 8 or Piano Concerto 21 or Symphony No. 10. Works like this are filled with emotional intellectual content. They just don't have a program or a story. For instance, when Bach wrote the prelude, in D major that I have been referencing often in these chats, one of a group of 12 preludes he wrote for beginners, he said. Most likely he wrote them for his students so they could begin to master playing more than one independent melody at a time. But he most certainly did not write at the beginning of the one in D major. This is about my little dachshund Fritzi who licks my toes in the morning while I played the harpsichord. I mean, he, he wrote no such thing. Now, we can sense from the general musical content of this piece that it falls somewhere on the right side of the optimism scale in life. After all, it's in a major key and it's in a moderate tempo or speed. Bach could have just as easily created a piece with a very different feeling if he'd written this prelude in D minor and slowed down the tempo. So, we have program music and abstract music. And the people that we call classical composers have written carloads of both kinds. Some have specialized in program music, perhaps people like the great opera composers, Giuseppe Verdi. But even some of them have tried their hands at abstract music. And we know that many of them wrote lots of both kinds. Think of Handel, Mozart, Bach, Beethoven, Haydn, the list goes on and on. As a psychological power of suggestion experiment right now, I'm going to play a short piano composition that is program music, intended by the composer. What I'd like you to do is to try to come up with the program without my telling you ahead of time, assuming you don't already know this piece. Do you understand your assignment? We're testing the power of this composer to suggest a certain specific mood with his music. Maybe adjectives will come to your mind as I play.
do you think? Did the word pompous or something like that come to mind? Or maybe the phrase, it's a big deal. Anything like that. Well, the composer Robert Schumann gave this piece of music the title Important Event. It's one of 13 pieces Schumann wrote in a collection called Scenes from Childhood. Each one of these pieces has a title. One he called Falling Asleep, for instance. Another he called Reverie. This one called Important Event. Now he wrote this collection of pieces when he was 28 years old. So here we have a 28 year old adult writing musical descriptions or reflections, program music, about scenes from his own childhood when he was seven or eight or whatever. And this one perhaps reflects the way he felt when Prince von Schnurzenhatten came to town or something in his big carriage with all of his servants. How do you think he did? If you'd like to test what you learned in Chad 3, you can keep track of which large chunks of music repeat as I play this again, and in what order. In other words, what is the paragraph structure of this music? Remember, the first paragraph will arbitrarily call A. You be the judge of whether Schumann succeeded in creating the scene he intended. As for the paragraphs, A, B, B, A. Bye.